director of surgery at uh, VS Medical College, and uh, he is with us as a local faculty. Uh, we, shall we start? Yes, sir. Please. Fine, fine. Okay. Uh, who is there? Florina. Okay. Uh, we have two cases lined up back to back. If possible, we'll complete both, or we can uh, separate the two. Not an issue. We'll be starting with. Uh, uh, just hold on. Uh, okay. Good morning, sir. Yeah, Hitesh Wali. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, we are taking a case of stoma us. presentation. Uh, Hitesh Wali, there are two things which I would like to say. One is that it's a short case. Yes, sir. So that you should consider. Dr. Ramanup, sir, specifically when the presentation is going on, if you can, uh, and Dr. Satoshkar, if you can point about how to take the history of a short case. Okay, sir. Please continue, Hitesh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, first of all, good morning to all the uh, respected uh, uh, experts. And uh, today I'm presenting on a, a case presentation on a stoma. Uh, starting with, I am presenting the case of 44 years old Hindu female, Miss uh, uh, Chandrika Bain, hearing from Ahmedabad, Homemaker by occupation, belonging to low socioeconomic class, presented to civil hospital Ahmedabad OPD for follow-up, and she is having stoma in situ for two months. Uh, history of present illness, she was relatively asymptomatic before two months when she met with road traffic accident, admitted in civil hospital Ahmedabad, and uh, emergency diverting sigmoid colostomy was done for grade four perineal injury with pelvic fracture. And from post-op day three, Stoma started functioning with semi-solid fecal output and she was discharged on post-op day 5. At present, stoma is healthy and well-functioning with daily output of about 500 ml semi-solid pieces. And she is using transparent disposable one-piece stoma bag without flange, emptying three times per day and changing it every 10th day. In uh, negative history, uh, she has no history of colic abdominal pain, distension, or vomiting. Uh, no history of peristomal uh, swelling, skin excoriation, and itching. And she has no history of stoma prolapse or retraction. And past history, uh, she was operated for emergency caesarean section twice, last being 20 years back. And she has no history of tuberculosis, diabetes, hypertension, or blood transfusion. In personal history, she takes mixed diet with normal appetite and has adequate sleep, normal bowel uh, bladder habits and has no addiction. With uh, his uh, uh, obstetric and gynecological history, including uh, the uh, P2, L2 and uh, the para2 and the live 2 child with uh, LMP with, uh, of uh, 17 February 2023 with regular menstrual cycle. And there is no significant family history. Uh, in general examination, I have examined the patient in proper daylight and adequate exposure with informed consent. Wait, 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 wait. Yes, Before sir. you go on to general examination, about the history part. Satoshka, sir. Ramanu, yes. sir. Yes. yes. Uh, see, in history, you are talking about uh, past history, family history, personal history. Uh, sir uh, made it very clear right uh, at the stage one that you are presenting it as a short case. Yes. And when you are presenting it as a, a short case, it means you are examining it in fashion as if you are sitting in OPD and you are, uh, you know, examining the patient. So, you know, whatever history that you ask the patient sh should be a very relevant history. You don't have time to talk with the patient. This present condition right in the first sentence that you have come out with or in the second slide that you have come out with that uh, the patient has come with the history of accident and perineal injury. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the history of LSCAs or history of uh, your uh, number of children and all this. Does this have any relationship with the accidental injury or does it, it doesn't have? So it is not really necessary to, you know, tell this in your exam because when you are presenting short case, the time for discussion is very short and you would like to have your discussion more on the sigmoidostomy, sigmoidostomy, stoma, stoma management. 
Yes, when you are talking past history, personal history, you are spending certain amount of minutes in, in that. And if you are a first candidate, second candidate in your examination to be examined, then it's all that examiners are fresh. You are fresh. So they have time to talk about this past history, personal history, and so on. But if you are among the last candidates, then examiners don't have time to listen to this because it has become monotonous all throughout the day they are listening to this. So this uh, entire history, past history, personal history, family history, uh, you have to just say it is contributory, non-contributory. It means if, it, if there is anything in that is uh, relevant, then only you need to tell that particular history when you are presenting a short case. See, please differentiate between short case and long case. <laughs> Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, so if but, it, anything is relevant, then only you need to make mention. Otherwise, you have to just say that uh, these histories are non-contributory because nothing out of this is leading you to anything directly to the current condition. Sir, Ramanuj, sir. I think a uh, very, very relevant point to make, doctor. I think when you are presenting a short case by all this past history, Caesarean, etc. history, you could have condensed it very well into two paragraphs and said about the sequence of events made into a summary so that you can complete all your history stories within five minutes and then proceed for the examination, which the examiner is waiting for you. So now, as we go to the examination, can you just summarize your history within one minute? Uh, I have a 42 years old. Hindu female. Uh, uh, doctor, 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 stop. Yes, sir. Religion does not have any relevance in this case, isn't it? So unnecessarily, again, so 44 year old lady. So rather than talk about females, 44 year old lady, please start and then. 44 years uh, lady uh, um, with history of road traffic accident uh, presented to civil hospital uh, and went, uh, underwent. Uh, with uh, emergency temporary diverting uh, sigmoidostomy for uh, uh, grade four uh, uh, grade four perineal injury with uh, pelvic fracture. Uh, doctor, I would like to ask you on this one because when you examine, there will be two wounds or one wound. That means if there is a laparotomy wound, laparotomy wound has its own set of complications like an incisional hernia. Whereas if you have only an ostomy wound that may have been a trephine ostomy or only been a local wound exploration in which ostomy was only intent of the operation. So that will be only making it one wound. So what was your case? Was it a laparotomy and then a stoma or was it only an ostomy? Only an ostomy, sir. Only an ostomy. Very good. And then proceed. Yes, How sir. was the patient in the post-operative period? Any particular concerns? Uh, what, sir? Any particular concerns about the ostomy? Did the surgeons went back again to the operation theater to do an ostomy again. Did the patient have was any, there any Was there any post-operative problems or complications or? No, no, no. no, no. So, uh, uh, I suppose what sir is interested in asking that whether the examination of primary wound was done at the same sitting with the ostomy or first there was an examination and something was done with the primary wound and then the stoma was done on the second sitting. No, yes, uh, if I understand. Same sitting. Right. Examination of the local wound and the ostomy was done in the same sitting. Okay. Next is regarding the ostomy. In the initial days, how was the output that the patient told you? Or how many times did the bag needed a change? For, uh, uh, in this case, the uh, patient has to change the stoma bag uh, every 10th uh, day or, or 9th to 8th day. No, 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 doctor, understand. Bag means it can be in two terms. One, he empties the bag four times a day or he changes one part of the bag then and replaces another part of the bag. So that means in the part when the patient had an ostomy. How many times did he or she needed to empty the bag? Per day, uh, she had to uh, empty the bag three times per day. So okay. At, least at that time, empty. when she was emptying the bag, what was the content? Solid, semi-solid, liquid? Semi-solid content, sir. Semi-solid content. Very good. Now, regarding this one, in the last two months, 
did she face any problems with the ostomy no sir she faced uh, she she has faced no problem sir no means now that is another way of asking because we will be coming to that in the complication that what are the expected complications that you have asked the patient regarding an ostomy in the last two months that she may have faced uh the stoma bag application and the management of the stoma bag then uh, uh, one is that another is a uh, uh, and uh, if there is a failed uh, uh, stoma bag application then uh, she may have a skin excoriation and uh, 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 so that means if you summarize them she could have had problems with the application of a stoma, the stoma bag man. yes sir now that could have been more pronounced in a sitting posture rather than in a supine posture supine remember posture. that this ostomy was an unplanned ostomy yes so sir so you did not have time to mark the ostomy site isn't it yes now, sir and in this point doctor let me ask you a simple one if this was an elective ostomy say you are planning an abdominal perineal resection yes an sir APR, what is an ideal site to get an ostomy In an uh, elective patient. In an elective patient, the ideal site is uh, uh, if we are doing uh, uh, for uh, like in uh, case of uh, abdominal perineal resection, if we are doing an end stent, then uh, according to the site, like in left iliac fossa, uh, in the uh, left spino umbilical line, and it should cover uh, the uh, lateral one at least uh, lateral one third portion of the rectus muscle. it should cut the uh, portion of the rectus muscle and it should uh, above uh, if it is colostomy then it should above the transverse line uh, uh, drawing uh, uh, passing from the umbilicus and if it is an colo uh, ileostomy then it should be uh, above the uh, transverse line that passes uh, above the um, uh, uh, from the umbilicus okay, doctor go to good one on that but i will let you have a little change in an elective ostomy remember that it is done Preferably in a sitting posture than a supine, because the infraumbilical fat can fold, creates a big issue in creating and uh, marking the ostomy. Okay, so let us again come back to your question on the problems that the patient had faced in the last two months. So number one had been application of the bag, supine or sitting. Number two, the content that came out of the stoma. Number three. the leaks around the back that we had caused a social embarrassment number four the odor the mal odor of the feces that comes out of the back the last one that you should ask the patient and that's an important issue is regarding any social problems that the patient may have had faced and this makes you a good student who also looks into the social domain and the psychological domain that the patient is not very happy with the ostomy Like he or she may not have been going going to the religious places to do a puja, maybe. So yes. these are the points, and that is the reason the patient has come to you now. The doctor, please take down my stoma. I need to live a normal life. Okay. So yes. these are the points, doctor. So which are you are required to do? The next issue is that that stomas that are there for a longer duration, say months. Okay, they may be associated with. Some electrolyte problems and fluid electrolyte issues yeah. and nutritional problems. Yes, sir. Otherwise, any ostomies are liable to getting obstructed, and you can have diarrhea through the stoma. See that there is more feces or there is less amount. Less, less amount. Okay. How many times did the patient have an obstruction related to the stoma? Uh, since it is a uh, uh, and. Uh... Direct ost from the ostomy incision, and there is no laparotomy scar. Uh, so no, the no, chance. No, doctor. How many times if the patient said that my stoma is not having any output for the last twelve to twenty four hours? She has no complaint of increase and decrease in the output of uh, stoma. Okay, very good. So that is an important point because when you will be talking about reversal of the stoma, these are the factors which will be talking into. Finally, before you move on to the next issues was there in a relation of any abdominal wall weaknesses or hernias around the ostomy site that the patient complained that is something that you examined but did the patient tell you that doctor i also have another lump around the stoma 
which expands on coughing. Did you have any such history? No, 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 no. Sir. Okay. So I hope, doctor, you have now understood. Whenever you are examining a patient, as Professor Satoshkar has said, very, very relevant. This is a very focused history as you will be doing in an OPD. Yes. You ask the patient about past medical history, like tuberculosis, diabetes. That is one part of the story, but there is more important part regarding the present problem. Okay. So now, yes. please proceed with the examination. I think, sir, uh, this is on my part. Please proceed with the examination. Yes, sir. Satoshka, okay. sir, any input yes. from your side or it is fine? Uh, no, there are some inputs. See, what type of colostomy is this? Is this an end colostomy or is this a loop, uh, loop colostomy? This is a uh, loop colostomy, sir. Temporary diverting loop signal colostomy. And what happen, has happened to the perineal wound after colostomy? Uh, what is the condition of the perineal wound? Has it served the purpose? Has the colostomy served the purpose? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The, uh, the, wound, the local wound was uh, uh, healed, sir. And uh, she has uh, uh, no any uh, local wound complications, sir, like first discharge or abscess formation. Then why why colostomy is there for so long? It is there for almost two months, you said. Because uh, local wound a... has healed. Why colostomy is still there? Because uh, it is an a uh, large wound uh, which require a healing time of at least uh, uh, one to one and a half month. And if uh, we uh, do not do uh, then uh, colostomy, then it will uh, complicate the wound and. Uh, Patient will have to bear for it. So. Yes. Do you think that uh, this particular colostomy for perineal wound, that is, you are doing this, you have done this colostomy for uh, perineal wound. Yes. Sir. Do you think sigmoid colostomy or sig sigmoidostomy is uh, always perfect for perineal wounds? Because, see, why have you done this particular colostomy? You have done this colostomy, you don't want any stool in in and around the perineal region, right? Mm -hmm. And when you are doing loop colostomy, sometimes some amount of stool or mucus can pass along the posterior wall of the sigmoid colostomy or sigmoidostomy. In the distal and, and it can reach uh, perineum or it can reach the anus. It has worked in this. I have no doubts about this. Sir, uh, but if at all you were the surgeon, if at all, what colostomy would be preferred when you are talking about diversion of stool so as to have a dry area in the perineal region, in the perineal wound? Sir, I would like to go with uh, sigmoid colostomy and and Which same colostomy? Thing. Sigmoid colostomy, sir. And oh, it is right. Hitesh, very, Hitesh, very understand. Yes, sir yes. wants to ask. Sir wants to ask that whether you, as a surgeon, would prefer a loop colostomy, a loop sigmoid colostomy, as this is in this case, or you would prefer an and sigmoid colostomy. All right transfers. All right transfers. I would uh, like to do sir uh, a loop colostomy uh, because it is an uh, for it is for a temporary uh, diversion for the purpose yes. of temporary diversion of the pieces. Yes, yes, absolutely. And but you can certainly you could have considered a right transverse colostomy because that will give you much better uh, diversion than plain simple uh, you know sigmoid uh, colostomy. Now, what happens to the colostomy? When the purpose is served, most of the stomas, how do you deal with these stomas? What do you do with the sigmoid colostomy, sigmoid ostomy? Now the wound has healed, patient is there with you. You cannot, you yourself have said that this particular colostomy is, uh, you know, temporary colostomy. Yes, sir. The wound has healed, everything is now fine. Now, uh, what to do with this colostomy? If she has no any uh, local wound complication and uh, uh, no any uh, obstructive feature present, then uh, I would like to go for a stoma, uh, the closure of the sigmoid colostomy. Yes. So for doing sigmoid closure of the colostomy, how would you proceed with the patient? I mean, what investigations will you do before uh, doing sigmoid colostomy? Mm -hmm. 
first of all in perineal examination with uh, digital rectal examination and uh, to check for anal tone uh, if uh, yes. it has a lex anal tone and uh, if we do a uh, colostomy closure then uh, later in case uh, she may have incontinence problem so in this regard i would like to do an very uh, you said about the grade 4 uh, injury grade 4 yes. what do you mean by grade 4 uh, perineal injury uh, grade 4 perineal injury is uh, it uh, extends uh, involving the perineum and uh, the perineal skin and the rectal mucosa okay hiteshwari yes. hiteshwari yes uh, i would like to point out two things in your uh, odp Yes, the sir. first thing is whether when you say the patient is admitted with stoma in c2 for 2 months yes sir right you should be also mentioning that the whether the patient has been admitted for any complication of stoma or patient is admitted for the closure of the stoma when you say that the patient is admitted the patient is having a stoma in c2 for 2 months and patient is admitted for closure of the stoma yes, that sir. means the uh, patient is not having any complications of stoma that you are ruling out in the history by and the patient is admitted for the stoma closure that you have not mentioned which should be there that is one thing okay. second thing is uh, the most uh, common problem all of the most of the residents do is as you are presenting right now you have all the case sheets all the past records all the investigations with you as patient is in your ward yes. but remember you are presenting this as you are presenting in as you are presenting in the exam and in the exam you will not be having any uh, past uh, records of the patient or the case sheets of the patient mm -hmm. so in your odp how can you mention that the patient was having grade 4 perineal injury unless patient has been uh, um, <laughs> briefed so much or the patient is related so as per me as per the examiner if some examiner is of uh, comes up uh, with such a mindset that how would on an opd base or an uh, history patient would be able to tell or you are able to tell that the patient has grade for his uh, grade for perineal injury on simple words you can say that the patient had a perineal injury before two months for which stoma was done and patient is admitted right now for the stoma closer yes sir see before going for stoma closure you must uh, check which are the sphincters that are involved see in grade 4 injury you go say grade 4 both internal as well as external sphincters are having damage you know so external things uh, sphincter damage internal sphincter damage internal sphincter damage may not be causing more incapacitation or something like that but external sphincter damage whether it is giving rise to any symptoms whether there is any incontinence that you will need to check before you embark upon the closure of colostomy yes sir similarly if there is any damage to the yeah. anus if there is any stricture you know anal stricture anal stenosis that also you will have to sort out because if you close colostomy and if there is a anal stenosis there could be a problem yes how do you train colostomy when you do sigmoid colostomy see how do you train colostomy because whenever sigmoid colostomy is there for long time is there for two months you don't want patient to have problems so you would uh, like patient to have a certain minimum number of stools per day well formed stools as far as possible and only uh, not uh, frequent but you know limited time so how do you achieve that because when you have done colostomy of fresh stools uh, may be semi solid or then they may be like you know diarrhea or something like that so how do you deal with that kind of a situation uh, i would like to advise the patient uh, regarding the diet uh, that uh, she should uh, take a high fiber diet with plenty of fluids and uh, uh, the the bulk uh, like uh, bulk forming agents with bulk forming agents so it will avoid the constipation and uh, 
the diarrhea. So. Okay. Then once that is done, once you have a solid stool, then how do you train? You can give enema in the proximal stoma. Yes, at, stomal irrigation also. Yes, at certain time interval so that the stoma is trained to uh, evacuate only at certain number of times in the uh, uh, per day. Yes, sir. Mr. So, Doctor, now please proceed with the examination findings of the abdomen. Yes, sir. Uh, general examination. I have examined the patient in proper daylight with adequate exposure and informed consent. She is conscious, cooperative, and well oriented to time, place, and person. With uh, she has uh, she is averagely built and fairly nourished with uh, weight of fifty four kg. And uh, on examination, there is uh, her temperature was normal by palpation. Pulse was eighty per minute. Uh, blood uh, BP was one twenty by seventy mmHg, and she has no paler uh, icterus, uh, sinuses, clubbing, lymphadenopathy, and edema. Uh, moving towards the local examination, uh, on inspection, uh, there was a uh, there is a. Exteriorized loop of bowel with two visible openings in left iliac fossa, approximately three centimeter below and lateral to umbilicus, protruding approximately two centimeter above the skin with pink and healthy mucosa, and uh, semi-solid stool is coming out from lateral opening with peristomal skin is smooth with uh, skin discoloration, but there is no excoriation, skin excoriation. There is a uh, no stomal prolapse retraction or uh, no any visible cup impulse and uh, uh, the stoma, attached stoma bag was disposable or uh, transparent one piece without flange okay. uh, moving towards palpation uh, inspectory uh, findings were confirmed there is no local rise of temperature no tenderness loop stoma with two openings uh, in the left iliac fossa present with uh, no cough impulse, uh, which suggests of no parastomal hernia. And the both openings allow the introduction of finger, uh, which suggests uh, uh, no uh, stomal stenosis. And the medial opening allows the finger directed uh, downwards and the medially, while the lateral loop is directed upwards and laterally. For abdomen examination, there is a healed vertical lower midline caesarean scar of approximately four, measuring 4 cm. Stoma uh, is uh, noted in the left iliac fossa and abdomen is uh, otherwise soft, non-tender. Uh, on PR examination, there is healed scar of perineal tear at uh, 5 o'clock uh, position and the anal tone was normal and rest of the systemic examination is normal. And my provisional diagnosis from above history and examination, uh, my provisional diagnosis is temporary diverting loop sigmoid colostomy uh, cited in left iliac fossa without complication for grade 4 perineal injury with pelvic fracture in a history of road traffic accident. Doctor, can you go back to the examination of the perineum or the PRE examination? Uh, yes, sir. Right. Okay. So now come to the diagnosis. So, your diagnosis, if the examiner wants in one word, will be a status colostomy in a patient with a history of a perineal trauma. Okay, good one. Now, to begin with, doctor, uh, let me ask you that you do not know the history of the patient. Go back to the picture of the stoma, the last picture. The picture of the stoma, please. Yes. Or the, the next one with the whole abdomen in view. Now, for a ward round, which stoma is a ward round case, mm. the examiner says that, okay, this is your patient and you do not know the history that the patient had a pelvic trauma. Okay, sir. Now, tell me, what are the points that go in favor that this is a colostomy? First is the site that it is located in the left iliac fossa. So, it suggests either it could be a sigmoid colostomy or a descending colostomy. Okay, yes. good one. Then, Number two. Uh, the, the openings, number of openings, uh, there are two openings. Uh, 
we suggest either it can be a double barrel or i think no oh, no no doctor did you understand my question was how do you know that this is a sigmoid colostomy you do not know the history so number one is the site Sign. the colostomies are usually placed in the left lower left abdomen yeah. if it is sigmoid colostomies yes, transverse sir. colostomies are placed in the right uh, upper part right of the upper quadrant ilostomies are placed in the right, right yeah. lower quadrant okay now this is only done because it is a shortest splint between that quadrant of the abdomen and the bowel so that is the reason it is done number 2 colostomies if you see the stomal size of the openings are yeah, usually larger, larger than the ileostomy yes and ileostomies are usually smaller Small. next what is the level of the stoma in relation with the abdominal wall it is uh... not uh, more uh, outed uh, it is uh, more plus to the plus to the skin very good so it is not usually more than a centimeter or plus with the skin yes sir okay and in an ileostomy it would be more of a spout oh. at least around 1 to 1.5 cm yes, why do you think ileostomies are more spouted uh, because of uh, to facilitate the uh, the drainage of the effluent because it is uh, because the consistent consistency of the effluent is uh, more over liquid or uh, semi liquid because the effluent is irritant to the skin and you usually do not need that irritant to come in contact with the skin with the in skin. a sitting position okay right so there are so these are the three points the fourth one if you have the bag the content of the bag yes sir sigmoid colostomy is on the will have a solid content solid or semi solid content uh, very good so these are the four points that goes in favor that this is sigmoid colostomy good what are the complications that can happen in the immediate post op period that means the next 3 days after you have done this stoma 3 days after uh... could be a uh, bleeding from the edges of the stoma number 1 number 2 then uh, the the mucosa uh, the discoloration of the the congestion of the mucosa or the stomal edema number 3 uh, any ischemic problems doctor any blood supply problems the stoma could have an ischemia uh, Ah, so the stoma Plenty could be of devoid the of the blood supply. Devoid of blood supply. Okay. Yes. Sir. And the stoma that you are seeing could be in a case of free gangrene or can be ischemic. Ischemic. Right. So what are the complications? Revise then again ischemia, ischemia gangrene, uh, gangrene, and oh, uh, bleeding from bleeding the from edge the of edge. the stoma. Yes. Sometimes sir. even mucocutaneous separation. The skin edges you forgot to stitch it well. And there is a mucocutaneous separation. Yes. Okay. Sir. Right. Other side now. After seven days to now next two months, what could have been the intermediate complications of a stoma? Mm, uh, Or what are the delayed complications of a stoma? Stoma retraction, stoma stenosis. Very uh, good. Then uh, stoma prolapse. Very good. Uh, then another is problems, hernia sto parastomal hernia uh, parastomal hernias will usually occur after 4 to 6 weeks or beyond 2 months okay. so it will be stomal retraction Prolapse stomal stenosis and, hmm. stomal prolapse which is also a delayed complication skin problems regarding the stoma in excoriation fistulations fistulations and skin we could have rare problems like pyodermas etc in relation to stomas Stoma. What are the long-term complications of a stoma? One is uh, parastomal hernia. Very good. And uh, if it is uh, created for uh, uh, malignancy, uh, then recurrence of uh, malignancy could occur. Very good. Number three, uh, obstructions. Obstruction can occur. Number four, diarrheas. Diarrheas. Number fifth. Will be again mucocutaneous problems like skin excoriations. Then granule uh, delay uh, bleeding from the edges. Bleeding from the edges of granuloma. Granuloma of the uh, right. And lastly, granuloma. in an exam, do not forget to mention the psycho and the social problems like yes. depression, 
and social neglect that sure. happens in a patient with stoma. Okay, yes, so doctor, this is a very common question that all examiners will be asking you. Yes, sir. That what are the complications of a stoma? Now you are a resident. While in a round, your consultant asks you, "This is the 24 hours of the stoma. The stoma is looking very dusky, appears ischemic. How do you know?" You have to take the patient to the theater for a revision of the stoma, or it will be okay on a conservative management. How do you make that decision? First, uh, did I make my question clear? Yes. The stoma appears ischemic, right? Uh, I would like to go for a stoma refreshing, sir. If no, it no, is no, 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 no. the patient is now on a ventilation. Okay, yes, patient has a very severe pelvic injury. Patient had received lots of blood. Patient is really very sick. Your consultant asks you, the patient is now hemodynamically stable, but the stoma is appearing with ischemic. So, will you like to take all patients of ischemic looking stoma to the theater, or is there any bedside test that you do to take that decision? I would like to uh, go for bedside test uh, because a uh, patient is a. Uh, what uh, bedside maneuver do you know that the stoma is not completely ischemic or the part that is above the fascia, only that part is ischemic? Viteshwari, sir, sir wants to know that like it is not gangrenous or it is the stoma is not blackened. Oh, it is brown like or dusky. It is brown or dusky. How will you decide? that this patient might improve on conservative management. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Hmm. By post-tumor examination, sir. By using? Uh, by uh, uh, inserting a finger into the... Uh, no, no, doctor. Let me say again. So if you read Bailey Lab, so Bailey Lab mentions it very easily and very clear. You do a proctoscopy like the one that you do for an anal examination or mm -hmm. if you are hesitant in doing proctoscopy, take a clear glass test tube. Shine a light through the test tube or a proctoscope. If the area of the stoma below the fascia, that means abdominal wall, is looking ischemic, that stoma will need a mm -hmm. revision. Refreshing. But if the only the distal end of the stoma, that means the part that is above the level above of the, the fascia, abdomen. below the skin, that is looking bit ischemic, maybe that will be stenotic but you can do it on a conservative plan. Okay. Yes. So that is one way of asking you that what is the bedside test that you take to take a decision about the offspring. Right? Very good, yes. doctor. Now, as Professor Satoshkar has asked you a very, very important question. What is the difference? What is the advantage of creating a loop stoma? Or what is the advantage of creating an end stoma? Like in this patient, you need the feces to be out of the perineal so that the wound can heal. What is the advantage of creating a loop stoma versus an end stoma or the vice versa? End stoma will be, sir, uh, flush to the skin. Uh, and uh, uh, it, if it is, uh, uh, there will be then more problem of uh, skin related problems. Uh, Dr. C, loop stomas, as Sir has mentioned it again, loop stomas are easy to construct. They may be easy to return, but the amount of diversion of the feces may not be absolutely 100%. So you may have little amount of feces which can drag down maybe through the distal root. Yes, sir. But if you need a complete, say 100% defunction, Hence, there was older terms like diversion stoma to be, to be loops, defunctioning stomas defunction. to be ends. So we have now moved on from these confusing words to make it loop, in which you may not have 100% fecal diversion to end, which will ensure there is 100% fecal, fecal diversion. But end stomas are difficult to reverse. Yes, sir. Okay. And there may be a good group of patients, Bailey Love mentions, 25% of patients who have a temporary stoma may not even have a reversal of the stoma. And we all have at this scenario. So that means loop has its advantages, easy to make, and maybe difficult to make and difficult to reverse, but the 
fetal diversion is absolute. absolute. Now, can you tell me what is a loop on an end stroma? Loop on an end stroma. What is a loop on end stroma? Okay. Now, loop on an end stroma is usually done if you have a blind loop of bowel. Say, for example, you have transected the ileum. Yes, or you have transited the colon and then you do not want to take out that end. So what you do is that you take out a part of the bowel proximal to the cotton. So if you have a stapler line, say around 10 centimeters proximal to the stapler line, you take out that loop that is will be functioning as a loop stroma. Whereas you get the advantage of a loop stroma with an easy closer, whereas it is also functioning with a complete diversion. So this is technically a new question that you are expected to be asked in exams, particularly if you read your service done well. So it is loop on an end stroma. Mm -hmm. so that's very good doctor. Now, so this is the first point. Number two, now selecting the site of the stoma. This is a fecal diversion on the left. What do you think are the advantages of an ileostomy in this patient if you have done an ileostomy? in this patient. So let us consider three. As Professor Satoshka has mentioned, very, very important point. You do a sigmoid loop colostomy, you do a loop ileostomy, or you do a loop transverse colostomy. Three different stomas in this patient, perineal tear. So what do you think would have been the advantage if you had done a loop ileostomy? Uh, in concern with... Uh... It is uh, easy to make. Loop ileostomy is easy to make and... Uh... No, but with loop ileostomy or any ileostomy, good old days, there were a lot of problems because the output of the ileostomy will be very yeah. large. There will be loss of fluid. There will be... Fluid electrolyte solid, imbalance. And... Fluid electrolyte imbalance. There will be nutritional problems. So, but nowadays, we are doing it very... Uh, uh, problems are not seen that much as much as they used to be seen in the previous days. Absolutely. So what is that development that has occurred in loop colostomy, uh, loop ileostomy or ileostomy? What is that development because of which we really don't have to be terribly worried about the fluid electrolyte uh, loss. What is that development that has happened in the technique of loop colostomy? It changed the entire scenario of loop colostomy. Yes, sir. You sir, already sir. said it also. So the output, uh, the amount of the output, uh, uh, the difference between the amount of output uh, between the aleostomy and the colostomy um, yeah. No, no, sorry, is asking, sorry, is asking something else. Yes. Sir, he won't be not uh, knowing, sir, please explain. Yeah, nippling, nippling. Previously, stromas were just brought outside, you know, when you were doing uh, uh, ileostomies, you would just pull the loop out mm -hmm. and then suture the mucosa to the surrounding skin. You know, surrounding skin. You make a cruciate incision. You cut the flaps. You get the stoma. Uh, you get the stoma out and uh, open the stoma, evert the thing, and suture mucosa to the skin when you are constructing a stoma. But nowadays, what you do is you take a suture which goes from the skin, then side wall of the ileum, and then to the mucosa. So it's a suture which takes three things. And when you take these three things, it forms into a nice nipple. And with this nippling technique, when the nippling technique came in, you know, the problems of ileostomy were much less. You just said it that you construct a nice nipple, so it nicely projects into the uh, ileostomy okay. bag that you already said. Yes. But the most important thing is you have to take the three things. You know, previously we never used to take the side wall of the ileum. Dr. Mukherjee? Yes, sir. Sir, I think, yes, this is what has been. Because previously, we just used to take two sutures, skin and the mucosa. Now, we take just three, skin, the serosa, two stitches, and then we take an everting stitch to create the nipple. Absolutely. Well, well marked point, sir. So, uh, Dr. Hiteshwari, so that means 
the point that sir has said is a very very important point for an ileostomy what are the advantages it is easy to make is somewhat advantages it is there is a lack of odor in an ileostomy yes sir number 2 remember the ease of care has become easy by the technique and it becomes easier to close a loop ileostomy but loop ileostomy has a disadvantage as you very very importantly mentioned or the doctor has mentioned there are fluid and electrolyte issues with a ileostomy can you mention any chance of a stone formation with an ileostomy yes if uh, patient is uh, uh, because of fluid, uh, increase uh, amount uh, of uh, output from the ileostomy and uh, uh, he is not taking doctor specific question specific answer what are the stones what stone are... what stone what will stone? be developed beta gallstone stone gall syndrome something because of dehydration gallstone and... no 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 gallstones are there very good why does gallstones form in patient with ileostomy because of uh, uh, bile stasis which are uh, not because uh, of loss of interhepatic loss circulation of... and bile does not get time to come back come okay back. and yes. what other stone is formed apart from a gallstone so pecol it's a you get a kidney stone kidney. what kind of kidney stone is formed you get an oxalate stone which is due to absorption of oxalic acid from the stoma with loss of calcium binding what kind of gallstone is seen in a patient with an ileostomy so uh, pigmented loss stone, of, so. it is usually cholesterol stone remember loss of interhepatic bile because of bile stasis very good so these are the problems that you are expected to land up with an ileostomy talk about a transverse colostomy loop transverse colostomy what are the advantages and what are the disadvantages and why is it not preferred now why we usually do not do a transverse colostomy or what are the advantage and disadvantage uh, one is uh, the the incision the it is it will not require the midline laparotomy wound and and next is uh, it is it is also uh, easy to make because of is a uh, large mesocolon mm -hmm. and so number 1 is easy to make because of the mobile transverse colon mobile transverse colon okay and it is easy to bring brought out Out, in the anterior uh, abdominal wall because surface. it is very close to the abdominal wall and it's easy to do in an emergency emergency hence yes. transverse colostomies are still one among the most preferred in an emergency scenario yes sir. but what are the disadvantages of a transverse loop colostomy particularly in the number 1 they are very large number 2 they are very prone to prolapse number 3 there is a very yes, difficulty so because there is a rib cage and making the bag in that part of the abdomen becomes a difficult part of, of the stone like yes so postural margin right so these are the three things that you are required to remember so you see we have discussed three kinds of stomas we have discussed it sigmoid colostomies advantage and disadvantage so if you see out all of these this is the reason that your consultant must have told you to do a sigmoid colostomy is because sigmoid colostomy is technically have those advantages yes sir. okay now doctor let me ask you a question on a different end now this is a trauma scenario let me talk about another patient in an emergency say for example there is a patient who comes with a rectal cancer and the rectal cancer is very close to your finger that means it is within 4 cm or 5 cm of the anal canal mm -hmm. and you know that the next operation could had been an abdominal perineal resection because you know you cannot probably go for a rectal preservation so in yes. that scenario in an emergency what will be your stoma of choice then also sir uh, i would like to do an end uh -huh. sigmoid stomy so can i know if the patient is presented with a uh, obstruction the patient because of the distal obstructing lesion 
Here, the patient presented with a rectal carcinoma, five centimeters from the anal verge with an intestinal obstruction. And the obstruction was a complete obstruction. You could not pass the stricture to end with the, that means the palpating finger could not go above the growth. So now what would have been your selection of the stoma? Will you like to do an end sigmoid or will you like to do a loop sigmoid or will you like to do an end sigmoid with the distal end as a mucous fistula? Sir, if the, it is a, a if it is proven that it is a malignant uh, stricture, then I would like to go for an uh, uh, resection with uh, uh, and please understand the question. The question is in an emergency. You are a resident in an emergency. Your consultant will be doing the abdominal perineal resection, whatever. After three months, after the radiation is completed, you are planning to do a diverse <laughs> save the life. I like understand. Patient sir wants to know that the, you are still not sure whether the you suspect that the rectal growth is a malignancy. And you expect your consultant to get a final surgery after two to three months. Yes, sir. What would you do to relieve the emergency? The sir has specifically asked there's three type of stoma options, which you will do. You are not going to do resection. I would like to do, sir, uh, loop uh, sigmoidostomy for temporary diversion of the pieces. And the, uh, the same type of stoma which is your patient having. Yes, sir. Okay. What would that be the problem? Or why not select the double barrel colostomy? Or why not only take out an end colostomy and fix the distal end of the stomach? Mm. Since okay, you can do, definitely you can do a loop colostomy. You see, this is a point. This is a postgraduate examination. And this is what you are asked. As a decision-making doctor in a postgraduate exam. You can say, sir, loop colostomy is the easiest to make. In an emergency, as you have done, they are very easy to do and it is the quickest to do. But the disadvantage is that, that in the next operation, when your consultant is doing that, he has to dismantle the stoma and the distal end of the bowel has to come out. So that means you again have to form a new stoma with this. So that will be the disadvantage. But if you had done an end stoma with the closer of the distal end, the distal stump, the problem is that that, that makes it a closed loop. And all the mucus that is accumulated there, as the rectum is closed, that will create a problem and may have a problem of that distal stump. So people will do taking out a mucus fistula as a double barrel or maybe through another small opening. So again, that preferred, so these are discussions that you are required to do in a postgraduate level. Yes. The next is that, now consider another scenario. This is a mid-rectal carcinoma. 10 okay. centimeter mid-rectal cancer, middle rec cancer in the mid part yes, of the rectum. Huh. The your boss is doing a and low anterior resection, LAR. They are yes, sir. Now your boss says that this is a male pelvis, very narrow, obese, and I'm, I'm not very sure whether the stapler has been adequate or not. I need a diversion. What kind of diversion will you like to do? after LAR, particularly ultra-low LAR. Ultra-low LAR, what kind of diversion will you like to do? He is not very sure of the anastomosis. He wants a protection of the stoma. Oh, sorry, the anastomosis. Distal anastomosis. Yeah. What kind of stoma will you like to do to protect the distal anastomosis? So temporary uh, diverting loop sigmoidostomy, sir. Sir, LAR, ultra low LAR. You will not get doctor that chance because if you can do a sigmoid, it's not that you cannot do. The problem is that that when you again revert that sigmoid, you will have again a difficulty operating on that left side of the abdomen. Already remember in an LAR, you have tied the inferior mesenteric artery. Yes, the sigmoid sir. already in an ischemic state. So that's not a very... Easy, easy option, option to do. Yeah. That is the reason we usually go in for a loop ileostomy. Loop ileostomy. Yes. Okay. 
So that is another important point that you are required to do. The last question on my end will be: This patient now the orthopedic guy says that they will keep a couple of months away from the operation. This patient wants to go on a pilgrimage, say for some religious reasons, and asks you, doctor, what will be the precautions that I need to take? <coughs> what are the dietary restrictions that I have if I have a stoma? Uh, in uh, in this patient particularly, sir. Uh, any stoma. Okay. Any stoma, technically. Uh, sir, the first of all, the, the maintain hydration by taking the plenty of uh, oral uh, liquids. Very good. Then high fiber diet, and uh, if it uh, then uh, the next is avoid uh, the carbonated drinks to uh, uh, avoid the pro bloating problems and uh, the stoma bag. Uh, uh, leakage problems because of that uh, blood, uh, gas accumulation or uh, air accumulation into the stoma bag. Then another is a, a high fiber diet with high protein diet and the uh, diet which is uh, which uh, 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 allows the bulk like uh, bulk forming agents with bulk forming agents. So that is high pectin diet. Yes. So they can eat, you can advise them to have fruits, bananas, more of a bananas, uh, which contains high pectin. Yes. Exactly. So I think that is more important rather than that fiber thing. Remember that pectin is important for the enterocyte nutrition and making the consistency of the stool. Tell them to avoid foods with high oxalic acid like onions and spinach. To avoid foods, foods that contain lactose, like milk and ice cream. Some people may have some gas-related problems. Yes. The last one is that the patient in the pilgrimage, in the religious place or whatever he is on a travel space, now sends you a picture on a WhatsApp that I have had a stoma prolapse. I don't have a doctor nearby. He yes, sends sir. you a WhatsApp picture. Yes, what sir. is your home remedy for that patient for a prolapse? He is say uh, thousand kilometers away from your hospital. Uh, Any I remedy know. that you have for a prolapse, home remedy, in which the prolapse can be at least, say, small prolapse can be reduced easily. Small prolapse can be reduced easily. Uh, I will. Uh, I would like to advise uh, them to uh, cover the uh, sto first. First of all, cover the stoma with. Uh, uh, in a, uh, with a saline or any water, then gently uh, pushed and uh, uh, gently push the stoma back into the uh, uh, abdominal cavity. By so the easiest option is to put some salt or sugar, particularly salt. Salt, remember, is hygroscopic. It draws in the water from the stoma and the edema that the stoma is with it the is prolapse edema. gets reduced. Then gently the patient can reduce the stoma in the back. Okay. Yes. Very good, doctor. You performed very well. Thank you. How do you close this uh, sigmoidal stomach stoma? What is extra peritoneal closure and what is intra peritoneal closure? Mm -hmm. Perhaps you have not seen extra peritoneal closure. I accept. Yes, yes sir. Yeah. But you must know. Uh, I'm asking this question because you must know. Because uh, nowadays, hardly anybody is doing extra peritoneal closure. <laughs> but you must know how do you do extra peritoneal closure and how do you do intra peritoneal closure? Um, I don't know actually, sir. See, in extraperitoneal closure, what you do is you separate out the stoma all around when you are doing the closure, but you do not open up the peritoneum. The closure is done outside the peritoneum. Outside that is what peritoneum. is extraperitoneal. So only you are dealing with the part which is outside the peritoneum. You separate it out from the skin, muscle, subcutaneous tissue and everything. Yes, sir. But you do not separate it out from the uh, peritoneum. Peritoneal edges. Yes. Yes. Sir. And... 
whatever procedure is done, once you separate this, you remove the, you refresh on the edges just above the peritoneum and you do closure over there. Yes. That, that is possible more in uh, loop stomas. Whereas in intraperitoneal, what we do is what everybody does now, you completely separate it, separate the stoma out, you take the stoma out, the stoma out and right. then you do re-anastomosis re or you can just do the single anterior layer uh, anterior closure. But nobody is doing anterior closure, you are just doing the re-anastomosis once you take it out of the peritoneum. But Good old days uh, when antibiotics were not there and people were worried about the infection. They used to think that uh, the colonic content should not go into the peritoneal cavity and that would reduce the chances of peritoneal infection. Peritoneal. So they used to practice this uh, extra peritoneal closure. But obviously the technical job would be more difficult with extra peritoneal closure and it was not sure whether you have done adequate job also. So nowadays it is blanket intraperitoneal closure. Yes. Sir. Right, sir. Great. Uh, sir, uh, 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 any further questions? Leo, sir? No, no, no. Uh, sir, yes, yes, yes. Only one, one thing from my side. Uh, uh, Hiteshwari, can you go back to, uh, can you go forward to your diagnosis? Okay. Okay. So nowhere in your history or examination or anything, anything mentioned and suddenly in your provisional diagnosis comes that a pelvic fracture. Sir, I this will... Thing, this you should be avoiding. Okay. Or you, you have to be mentioned it somewhere in the history or examination. How your diagnosis of pelvic fracture comes? There is a, nowhere it's mentioned. Sir, I have mentioned in history of present illness. With Where? Illness. Present illness? Yes, sir. Okay. Perineal injury with pelvic fracture. Okay. Fine. Yes, Ramanu, sir. Thank you, sir. But it was a very good discussion. Doctor, you did okay. really very good. Well. Uh, we have sir, covered every, all the aspects if, of the coma that you are required. Sir, yeah. sir if, if, you, if you can yeah. bear with us for a couple of minutes, we have a small presentation on stoma bags. Okay, definitely. I uh, would like your inputs on that. Thanks. Should I continue? Yeah, please. Yeah, please. Uh, okay. First of all, uh, uh, the brief uh, uh, description about the stoma. Uh, the stoma is an artificial opening made in the colon or a small intestine under the anterior abdominal wall to divert the feces and platters to the external. Just one minute. Stoma is not always on the colon because you have got stomas at other places also. Yes. You have got gastrostomy. You have got esophagostomy. Yes. Cervical esophagostomy. You have got gastrostomy. You have got suprapubic cystostomy. So stoma is not always only on colon. Only on on right. Ureterostomy. 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 Even. Ureterostomy. Even. Ureterostomy. 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 But cutaneous ureterostomies are there. Though now they are not done much because of, again, the problem of excessive, you know, stomach loss and all sorts of other problems. But the point is there are other stomas also. It's not only on colon and ileum. Yes, yes. So stoma is basically an opening. The word is for the... Replacement of the word opening, right? Continue. Uh, opening on any hollow viscous. Yes, on any hollow viscous, right, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, where they can be collected in an external uh, appliances. Uh, in, in inter regarding the intestinal ostomies, uh, which divert, uh, which is create, which was uh, created uh, for the purpose diver purpose of diversion of uh, uh, feces. Uh, there are mainly two. Uh, the colostomy and the ileostomy. Then the uh, classification of the stoma uh, based on the duration. There are temporary and permanent uh, uh, stoma. Uh, then based on anatomical location, uh, on grossly there are uh, uh, the which part of the uh, bowel was brought out onto the anterior uh, the surface. Uh, it is a uh, uh, ileostomy. Then uh, see uh, in the right iliac fossa, it is an uh, ileostomy and cecostomy. And uh, uh, in the right upper quadrant, it can be a, uh, it is a transverse colostomy. And in the uh, left lower quadrant, it is a descending colostomy and sigmoid colostomy. 
uh, and based on function, it can be diverting uh, or defunctioning stomy and the decompression stomy. Okay. Depending on the sites, cecostomy, yes, it is uh, only to be mentioned as the for the purpose of just mentioning. Hardly anybody does the cecostomy. Yes. Yes. Sir. Uh, why do you think? Compression of the list. Why do you think that why cecostomy is uh, in disrepute? Why cecostomy is in disrepute? Because cecum's blood supply is a very poor blood very supply. Cecum doesn't have uh, anastomo uh, uh, anastomosis in its wall. So generally, cecostomy tend to become ischemic more easily. Generally, the problems of leak and other problems are more with sicostomy. So, mm -hmm. And that is why nowadays we do not do sicostomy. Secondly, ascending colostomy and descending colostomies, you generally do not do it in large number of frequencies mm -hmm. because these are the areas of colon which are either to the posterior abdominal wall. It is There is no free isocolon for them. Yes, sir. Yes, so they are more on the posterior wall. So if at all you want to do ascending or descending colostomy, you need to mobilize this uh, particular area. And that's why in emergency, you want to do it as fast as possible and you want to go on to the parts of colon which are having mesentery and which can be easily, easily mobilized. Yes. Now transverse colostomy. Do you, where do you locate the transverse colostomy in transverse colon? It is most of the times it is in the right transverse colon. Right transverse, yes. Why? Why not left transverse colon? Because... Uh, they not done left transverse colon, yes, but why not left transverse colon? Again, uh, sir, because of the poor blood supply and the... Uh, no, 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 no. The splenic flexure of the colon is much more fixed. It's a fixed portion exactly. of the colon. And if you want to do left transverse colon, you will be, need extensive mobilization of the splenic flexure and the left transverse colon before it really comes out. And exactly. you don't have that much. That is the most difficult portion of the colon to be, you know... Okay. Mobilized. Uh, mobilized. Yes, sir. So it will, uh, you know, have, uh, you will have difficulty. And second point about uh, left transverse colostomy is because the blood supply of the colon, the region of the blood supply is changing because on the left colon is supplied by left branch of left. middle, middle colon. colon. And the descending colon is supplied by the ascending branch of left colon. Left colon. And there is a critical point of yeah. Uh, Today, uh, yes, sir. I forget the name. You know, there is a critical point right at the uh, splenic flexure, and that is not the problem with the right uh, uh, right side of the colon. Right side, right side, of, side of, the of the colon is well supplied by your uh, middle colon. So that is why you will never see any colostomy being put in the transverse colon. Yes, and you will also not put any colostomy in the transverse colon, uh, left transverse colon. Okay, so that is. I cannot hear, uh, sir. I, I think you are actually muted, sir. I don't know. Pardon? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Sir. I think I lost you for a couple of seconds. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. So go ahead now, please. Mm -hmm. Okay. So based on function, uh, it can be diverting uh, and decompression stomy. And the decompression stomy, uh, it can be low colostomy, uh, uh, like low uh, low hole cecostomy and the tube cecostomy. Then uh, this is the uh, end stoma. Uh, the first one is the end stoma. Yeah, here, uh, here is the the one loop of the the one loop of the uh, bowel is uh, brought out onto the anterior surface and uh, the stoma is created in a double barrel stomy. The after double barrel, the figure that you have shown, I would beg to differ. You know, generally there needs to be a skin bridge in between the two stomas to call it really a, a double barrel uh, colostomy. Otherwise, what's the difference between loop colostomy and double barrel? 
Uh, sir, the posterior. But yes, okay. This is... can well be taken as double barrel colostomy, but classical double barrel colostomy is the one where there is a skin bridge between the two loops. Is... And this yeah, you can call right, double barrel because there is no posterior wall continuity. And you are getting. Basically, sir, this is, this is what we have in UA. As been, in our institute, we are doing a double barrel like this, sir. Yeah, yeah, sir. I accept uh, this as a double barrel, though no, so it's not a classical one. Is... So Technically, yes. the full age procedure. So the, yes. the two ends that are brought in the colon. So, okay. You can so the crush the spur in between. Right. Yes. Continue. Uh, next one, the tube sequostomy. Uh, the tube sequostomy uh, uh, in cases in a circumstances like uh, largely distended, grossly distend, distended. Uh, uh, large bowel, we can uh, uh, create uh, for the purpose of decompression the either the the blow the the either the catheter like malacot catheter or a tube is inserted uh, into the uh, cecum uh, for the purpose of uh, uh, decompression. But the disadvantage is uh, that uh, uh, there are high chances of uh, getting block uh, uh, of catheter by uh, fecal matter and. It requires uh, 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 reg uh, frequent uh, uh, irrigation. Then another is a loop stoma. Here, uh, uh, one the difference between the double bar and the loop stoma is a posterior wall continuity. Uh, and here also the two loops are uh, uh, brought out into the anterior wall surface. And uh, another is a blow hole stomy. It is the tube sequostomy and the blowhole uh, sequostomy are created for the same purpose, but uh, the blowhole sequostomy and the difference is uh, that uh, here the uh, the edges of the uh, cecum or a bobel is uh, brought up onto the anterior surface and uh, uh, fixed to the skin. It is also known as skin sutured uh, sequostomy. Then uh, som stoma site selection, uh, particularly for uh, uh, permanent end when we are going to create a permanent end stoma uh, it is depend on physical condition of the patient like the general health of the patient the weight of the patient and whether the patient is right handed or the left handed then the social activity uh, that uh, 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 the occupation the uh, sports and the culture of the uh, patient and uh, then uh, where uh, the stoma, uh, uh, where we have the areas where we have to avoid uh, the stoma formation, that uh, it should be uh, avoid from any bony prominence like costal marginal ili uh, iliac margin. Then it should be avoid from the skin crease folds, and uh, it should be avoid from the, the umbilicus and the previous scar site. And the belt line should be visible to the person and the patient, and uh, it should be uh, av uh, away from the uh, previously irradiated skin. Then the next is visibility. Shite should be visible and in rich, uh, 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 should be visible and in rich to the person. And uh, we should uh, choose an relatively flat area of five to seven centimeter for a stoma uh, uh, so that we can uh, apply the stoma bag uh, easily. And in obese person, uh, uh, we should choose an area in uh, uh, more towards an upper quadrant. And if person is, has already has stoma on one side, then mark the new side uh, two to three centimeter up or down to allow the belt if needed. Then the assessment of the position and that uh, 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 before uh, creating a stoma, uh, it is uh, we uh, have to, uh, we should uh, uh, make the stoma in a. Uh, proper position for the uh, better apply easy and the better application of the stoma bag and to reduce the complication uh, related to the stoma bag application. And uh, it is uh, between the stoma triangle, which is uh, uh, located uh, the, by three imaginary line between the umbilicus, the pubic symphysis and the uh, anterior superior iliac spine. And uh, it should be, uh, it should cover at least one third of the uh, one third portion of the rectus muscle for the uh, the better control uh, of the stoma. Then the body profile of the patient. Uh, it is uh, uh, 
like uh, regular the peristomal area is a uh, more or less uh, a level with the abdomen although the skin surface may be uneven uh, it can be inward like uh, in this case the peristomal area sink into the abdomen and creating a hollow and another is outward uh, body profile that in this case the peristomal area rises from the abdomen and creating a pic and the stoma template it is uh, basically uh, used to cut the skin barrier according to the size of the stoma and helps in uh, the proper application of the skin barrier to uh, avoid the leakage and uh, uh, stoma bag related problems then the parts of the stoma uh, one is the ostomy barrier uh that uh, it uh, it should lie in contact lies in contact with skin and separate pouch from the internal conduit and it is also known as wafer or base plate and it is made up of pectin and it is of two type cut to fit uh, skin barrier and a uh, uh, moldable skin barrier in cut to fit uh, uh, we have to uh, cut the uh, barrier according to the size and shape of the stoma and then we have to uh, apply the uh, apply on the stoma whereas in moldable form uh, uh we have just uh, we have to just uh, adjust the st uh, uh, stoma barrier uh, according to the size and shape of the stoma and it is uh, uh, the moldable forms are uh, 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 it is very helpful in case of uh, 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 if the patient uh, gains weight or reduces the weight and uh, if, uh, in initial period there will be uh, stoma edema and after that the uh, the stoma uh, big, uh, edema will reduce and the uh, size of the and shape of the stoma changes then uh, it will uh, accommodate uh, to the size and shape of the stoma according to that then the uh, pouches uh, there are two types the open end which are drainable pouches the the uh, advantage of the drainable pouches are there's uh, there are less uh, less changing is required it is easy to empty the bag for disposal and it is preferred for allostomy or colostomy uh, but the disadvantage is it is difficult to drain the thick content and uh, there is sudden leakage of content from the open end and the closed end another is closed end which is uh, disposable and the one time use that uh, the advantage of this bag is it is easily accommodated uh, to the daily lifestyle and it is good for exercise and the swimming but the disadvantage is uh, uh, we have to uh, the replacement of the bag must be always present and uh, it is not good for high liquid output and uh, uh, it require because it uh, requires the changing two to three times per day and it is uh, more difficult draining in public and it is not useful for urostomy because uh, Uh, because of the high liquid uh, output and uh, another is filter it is made up of charcoal and it acts as a vent so that uh, so it allows the gas to escape it and so that it prevents the ballooning and it also neutralizes the odor then stoma clip it is uh, less costly and but there are more chances of leakage and it is uh, applicable in a uh, the open end stoma uh, drainable stoma and the types of stoma bag the one piece stoma bag the uh, advantage of the one piece stoma bag that it is easy to use it is uh, flexible less bulky and it is adapted to the uneven skin and uh, a quicker application whereas the disadvantages are the frequent changing is required there are more uh, chances of the skin excoriation and uh, the the less accommodating to the special needs another is uh, one piece stoma bag with a uh, window this is one piece stoma bag with window uh, it will allow the uh, stoma examination uh, without uh, removing the uh, whole stoma bag and uh, it also helps in uh, uh, stoma irrigation or uh, uh, if we uh, like to give an Uh, stoma enema and for that so uh, that the advantage is that we do not have to remove the uh, whole stoma bag for the only for the stomal examination or irrigation of the stoma 
and the two piece uh, bag the here it has a skin uh, the one is a skin barrier and another uh, the other part is the pouch uh, pouch of the uh, stoma bag the advantage is the it has less skin score it is better for the special needs and uh, it has uh, less frequent changing is required the disadvantage is like more chances of leakage uh, uh, it was more rigid and because it is inflexible and bulky and yeah. so it is difficult to clean the flange another is stoma bag with belt it is used for an end stoma because it is easy to apply it is cost effective adjustable and it has no flange it is uh, here this is uh, the stoma bag with the two belt uh, whereas it is the two piece uh, stoma bag with a single belt Then another is a transparent bag that the advantage of the, this is a, it is easier to check the stoma uh, for the stomal examination and uh, uh, the less patient intrusion and the disadvantage that is a, it is less uh, discreet whereas in opaque bag it is uh, discreet so and socially acceptable whereas the disadvantage is difficult to check uh, the stoma. The convex bag and the flat bag. The convex bag, the advantage is that it accommodates to the flush stoma. It is good for the retracted stoma and it adapts to the surgical scar, skin wrinkles and the creases. It, is, uh, it has longer lasting seal. Uh, it is moldable and uh, accommodate to the telescoping stoma. Whereas disadvantage is it is more expensive and the less discreet. Uh, and in flat bag, it is better for the prolapse stoma and the disadvantage that it requires a protruding stoma of at least half inch. And the stoma care, the, the stoma appliances, uh, to start with the cleanser, first uh, we have to clean, uh, it uh, helps in cleaning and moisturizing of the skin, then uh, it can, it can be directly applied on the stoma and first we have to clean the outer surface and then move towards the stoma. And the barrier cream, uh, after uh, cleansing the area, uh, we have to apply the barrier cream. It provides the nourishment to the skin. Uh, it keeps the skin pH 5.5 and helps in healing of the excoriated area. And we have to apply for it uh, for a few minutes, like 5 to 10 minutes and then wipe it off with the cleanser. Then uh, after applying a, a barrier cream, then uh, we have to apply the uh, stomy powder, which, uh, which, which, which was applied on a dry skin and it prevents the skin excoriation. Uh, it, it, is, uh, sprinkle, uh, it was sprinkled around the stoma and uh, we can remove the extra powder with cleanser. Then the stoma paste, it is used in one piece stoma bag and it seals the edges, uh, edges of the stoma, so avoid the fluid coming in contact with the skin and helps in sealing of the skin barrier uh, uh, to the skin. Then uh, it uh, closes the, uh, we have to close the cap immediately after the use of the stoma paste because it, it, uh, it contains the alcohol and uh, we have to use the uh, wet finger to spread the paste, paste and it is uh, also available in a form of strip which is non-alcoholic. And the elastic C tape, uh, it provides an extra safety uh, while doing the movement or, and uh, the two piece, uh, the two piece of the C tape is required for the one stoma bag. Uh, the next one is a stoma deodorant. Uh, it neutralizes the order uh, and provide the multi-lubricating effect and keep the content at the bottom of the bag. We have to just put a few drop and rub it gently. And uh, stoma belt, it is available in both one piece and a uh, two piece bag. It is a uh, uh, adjustable length uh, according to the girth of the, uh, it is available in adjustable length according to girth of the patient. Uh, and uh, it provides the extra security of the stoma bag and slide the belt uh, under the patient's back and put hook boy, uh, on a base plate on the both sides. And uh, this is an cleanser. 
This is an uh, stoma paste. This is also uh, the powder. Then these are the C tapes for extra security of the stoma bag. And uh, this is an, uh, again, the stoma paste in a uh, uh, paste form, not in a tube. And this is an uh, belt, stoma belt. And the balloon tasting, uh, it is uh, after applying the st uh, stoma bag, uh, to make sure that there is no leakage of air uh, from the bag, uh, we have to uh, uh, put the 50 to 100 ml of the air uh, is pumped uh, into the stoma bag and then block the stoma bag and uh, check for the leakage of the air from the uh, skin barrier. In stoma irrigation, uh, it helps in emptying of fecal content and uh, it uh, prepared the bowel for surgery and for the diagnostic purposes and it controls the order and the, the most commonly used irritating fluids are uh, the tap water, the normal saline, the PEG, uh, PEG and the uh, glycerol nitrate. And the difficult application of uh, appliances like in case of a retracted stoma or a plus stoma, uh, we will prefer uh, the application of a convex bag that it is easy to apply the convex bag over uh, that area. Then the recessed stoma, like uh, where the stoma is uh, 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 hidden by a pendulous breast or a large skin fold, like in case uh, or in case of obese patient. Then another is a separated stoma. Then in case of, uh, uh, in that case, we have to use the filler paste to peel the gap and then uh, apply the stoma for better uh, fixity and security of the skin barrier of the stoma bag. Then stoma prolapse. Uh, for the stoma prolapsed, uh, first, uh, like uh, so said, uh, we have to uh, put the stoma bag gently back into the abdomen and for that, uh, because of the edema, we have to cut the whole larger uh, uh, of the skin uh, skin barrier. And another is stomal edema that uh, the cold compression uh, is applied before the stoma bag application and uh, put the radial cuts on a plate to for a better fitting of a st uh, skin barrier of a stoma bag. Then uh, if stoma is uh, located near the laparotomy bone, then we have to cut the wafer or the base plate of a, a stomy barrier more towards the periphery uh, and then uh, apply the uh, bed for a better security and applying of the stoma bed. Then another is a, a silver paint. Uh, in reality, it is an aluminum paint and it also acts on a skin barrier and prevents the skin excoriation by preventing uh, the the effluent coming in uh, by uh, contact with uh, skin and it is also cost effective yes. uh, sir uh, your inputs anything dr satoshkar sir dr ramanup sir sir good presentation exhaustive presentation i think uh, please share it with your colleagues because you have tried to yeah. work with hard and uh, this should be in the YouTube because we have tried to cover every, particularly this, there are many aspects of the stoma, these bags, etc., which are not readily available to many uh, postgraduate residents. So you have done a good, good presentation. You have done an exhaustive presentation. Good work. Yes, yeah, you have done a pretty good job and a nice presentation. You have collected a lot of actual photographs and uh, you must have taken a lot of efforts for that. And uh, I agree with uh, Dr. Mukherjee that uh, you should share it with the larger community. Sir, and it is really nice sir, photographs. We... Really nice photographs. You know? Sir, it is it is live and we keep it on our uh, YouTube channel. It is yeah, free for all nice. the postgraduates. Right. That's very and nice. for our own college, uh, what we do at the end of uh, six or eight months, we print it out and hand it out as in handbooks. Wow, that's so, great. Good. 
very nice. Thank you, sir. Sir, I think we'll uh, uh, call it a day for that uh, for this particular session. Uh, right, amputation may, we may take the next time. Sure, right, sir. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank, yeah, thank, you, thank you, doctor. Thank you, sir. And of all, you are. Thank you. Thank you, the Prosgar student. I am not. Uh, your name is too long. <laughs> <laughs> Hiteshwari Patel, sir. Hiteshwari, Hiteshwari, yeah. Patel. Patel, Patel is very easy, but Hiteshwari is a... Nikalne ko dara do minute lagya. Thank you, sir. Dr. Hamad Lewa, thank you. Yes, thank sir. You, sir. Thank you, Aparva. Okay. okay. Thank you. Sir. Okay, sir. Bye.